Uh oh, the lighting. Let's see. Let me go this way. Hey guys, how are you? Hopefully the internet will stay strong. How's the lighting? Is it bad? By the grace and mercy of the Chime God, Father, Son, and Spirit. By the grace and mercy of the Chime God, Father, Son, and Spirit. By the grace and mercy of the Chime God, Father, Son, and Spirit. We love you, Father, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm using my brother's internet. He got his internet working. So I'm trying to stay away from the lighting here so I won't blind you. So pray again for internet connection to stay strong. Pray for clarity of thought and speech. It's been a while. How long has it been? How long has it been? It's been a while, hasn't it? Romans 1, yeah. Reprobate. Hmm, good question. And you look up a dictionary, reprobate. Yep, somebody. Nation of Islam. No, I don't have any articles off the top of my head that I can reference about the nation of Islam. But anyway, we love you, Father. And Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Again, Father, I ask that you purify us, cleanse us, wash us in the blood of the beloved the blood of your son, the Lord Jesus, and crucify our flesh and mortify our flesh and save us from our flesh and the stains of the flesh. And Father, forgive us for our moral failings. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Anoint us by your Holy Spirit. Fill me now, Father, for the glory of Jesus Christ with wisdom, knowledge, understanding from your spirit to bless your people, Father. Bless them. Flood us in your love. Wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ and fill us with your Holy Spirit, with your glorious presence, Father. Anoint the words of my mouth to speak truth without error. Save me from stammering and confusion and enable me to recall scripture and interpret scripture perfectly for your glory, for your majesty, for the glory of Jesus. And to bless your people with wisdom and knowledge and holiness and purity and faithfulness from your spirit to be in love with you, in love with Jesus, in love with your Holy Spirit, Father. And Father, fill my lungs and my chest and my throat with the breath of life, the health I need to do this. And please keep the internet connection strong and use me for your glory. You don't need me, Father. We need you. We need the Lord Jesus. We need your Holy Spirit. And please provide for us and save us, Father, from our trials. Save me in a miraculous way and bless us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yahweh, Father, my spirit. Yep, sorry, guys. I haven't been on for a while. Hopefully, I'll be back in the groove of things. Pray for me. Big changes are coming up. Here are the dates I need you guys to pray for. February 10, February 15, and February 19. February 15, God willing, I move to my apartment, waiting my brother to join me by the end of March. Suffice it to say, this is a huge step in my life, and it's kind of scary because I'm going to have to be alone, and it's overwhelming me, the fact that I have to be alone, right? So. I Jesus to comfort me, to flood me in his peace, his love and joy, and keep me occupied in his presence. And ask the Lord Jesus to bless my daughters, to wash my daughters in his precious blood, to fill them with the spirit and to keep them perfectly healthy. Right. And that he'll provide for them and me. And again, I need miraculous deliverance, February 10 and 19, because again, a corrupt legal system, a judge of the devil, use of the devil, trying to storm me, pray against her. Pray God miraculously shows up and arises and protects me for his glory, right? So pray for that. So keep praying for that, folks, and I hope the internet stays strong. If not, I'll probably relocate, go upstairs. I need miraculous intervention, February 10 and February 19. God show up and fight this wicked judge, this agent of the devil, right? Use of the devil and a wicked, evil, filthy human being. May God silence her and shame her and save his servants for his glory in Jesus' name. I don't know. Is the picture clear on in your part? Can you guys see me? Is it clear? Pray. It's been a while. I'm using the internet connection at my brother's place. Pray that when I move in my place, I can get good, good internet. Yeah, so pray for that. Uh, it's tiring. I've been tired. And if you, the reason why you haven't seen me is because over two weeks ago, I got hit with the flu. And typically, if I was in Chicago, it takes me about four days to get over the flu. Here, it took me much longer than normal. Maybe it's because it's dry heat. And I'm still not completely, completely out of the, you know, 
out of the woods. So pray for miraculous healing. And I think being a little sick kind of made it a little more overwhelming, being alone and sick. And so it really, really, really was a struggle, you know, claustrophobia, panic and all that. So I need Jesus to show up. Folks, really, if there is a time I need a miracle, February 10 and 19, beg Jesus to show up miraculously because I cannot fight this, but he'll fight it for me. Interestingly, I, I, I got to hear from my daughters this past Friday for the first time in September 15. Glory to Jesus Christ. It was great speaking to them, encouraging them, and confirming to them that I love and adore them and that I won't leave them and they will be in my life. So I got to speak to them. But unfortunately, the next day, their mother got involved and started a fight, and it didn't go too well. And then the abuse started, sending me text messages, abusing me, and saying God has punished me through this corrupt legal system. No repentance, no fear of God, no shame, but justification for her sin. And I'm the evil one. And she pretty much hinted she's stalking my social media pages. Believe it or not, it text messages, her abuse, and that's what she's done for 10 years. Just verbal abuse emotional abuse and even physical abuse. And so she pretty much hinted that she's watching my social media pages, threatening me saying, all oh, people on social media, the, you know, because I can open my mouth too. No repentance, no fear, no shame. And because of a corrupt, evil, wicked judge, in her mind, she feels justified that God is punishing me, right? Yeah, stupid stuff, stupid stuff. But that's why I need you to pray. God will save me, even save her and chasten her to fear the Lord and repent because there's no repentance, just justification of her immorality. And the ones who are suffering are my daughters. So hit the like button. Hopefully we'll build up the page again. Alex, if she was, I wouldn't be in the situation that I'm in. If she was a Christian, she wouldn't have committed adultery twice. May God deal with her and heal my heart not to have any bitterness towards her because she makes it hard to be a Christian. Sophia, if that's if that's her way of trying to get me back, I don't know. But pray that she'll break and repent and remove the man that she's with. What's the, one of the most painful things is that there's another man who's watching my kids, a guy named Martin who's watching my kids. He has no business in my children's life. But such is life. So pray, Jesus Christ, my Lord, will remove this guy, Martin, away from my daughters. Guys, please pray. I need your prayers. I need your fasting. The Lord protects my children from this man by the blood of Jesus and convicts that woman to fear the Lord. So keep praying. James White is my brother in Christ. Okay? Yeah. He's my brother in Christ. I love him. He's been a big influence on my life. I've had differences with him, and I've been angry with him, disappointed with him, but that's human nature. But again, let me answer this question, Phoenix. He is my brother. I love him. He has done great work for the kingdom. He's done some stuff that I wasn't too pleased with, and likewise, he feels the same way about me. But one thing you're going to learn in ministry, every apologist out there, especially those working with Muslims, let's say. Every one of us have serious issues. Every one of us. You can see mine. I'm like an open book. Impatience, anger. I get really emotional. I take things very personally. I'm very sensitive. You know David Wood's issues. Every person in the field has some issue or issues he or she struggles with. And let me remind you why this is. I thought about it. Why God, who can miraculously transform us and heal us miraculously, he can miraculously heal us and remove all these imperfections. But why does God, in his perfect wisdom, why does God, in his perfect <clears throat> understanding, allows his servants, those whom he's using for his glory, to glorify the name of Jesus, to struggle with these issues? And my answer there is number one to keep us humble as medic said in jesus name number one to keep us humble i'll probably have to go upstairs let's see hold on maybe i'm gonna have to go upstairs folks let's see walk with me i'm gonna get closer to the router let's see what's going on here am i losing more weight is that or is it just me let me see if i go go by the wrong am i am i losing more weight than before am i just getting more handsome by the minute I'm going to go by the router, hopefully. It'll get better. 
right? All righty then. Maybe I should get sick more often and I get skinnier. <laughs> Hold on. Let's go by the router, man. Come we who fear the... Hopefully, this will be it. Okay, so, yeah, as I was saying, hopefully the internet stays strong. Pray when I move into my new place so I can get top-notch internet connection. Yeah. Uh, yeah, coming back to the issue. Thank you, Irene. I pray I am. Pray for my health. Pray for my holiness and purity. Pray. February 10 and 19, two big court decisions again. I really need Jesus to show up. I live in another state. Pray God will silence that judge there and remove her to leave me alone for the glory of Christ. So I need your prayers. February 10 and 19, two big events. Now, so the Lord uses people like myself who have serious issues to keep us humble, number two, so that no one person becomes the focus of Christianity apart from the triune God, apart from Jesus Christ. So when you get to meet the apologists, they'll disappoint you. I'll disappoint you. You pray for righteous things, so the Lord must have a reason. I don't know what that means, Tom Ryans. Is the connection good? It shouldn't be buffering. It's going smooth now. Revelation 22, 13, bro. You want me to plug right now and try to find an Ethernet cable router to plug in right in the midst of a live stream? See, like here, you're proof. So you just disappointed me. You're a great disappointment, Revelation 22, 13. And yet God still uses you. You see, you just pr proved my point. You just confirm. Okay, you sinner. All right. So that's the thing. Apologists will disappoint you because we are sinners who are perfected by the grace of the triune God. Now, with that said, it's been a while. I wanted to come back and get into the groove of things and ask the Holy Spirit to fill me so I can bless you for the glory of Christ. We're going to go back to doing topical studies. And I also plan, by the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to do expository <clears throat> preaching where we'll go through books of the Bible if you're interested. Let's say we'll go through the Gospel of John, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, if you are interested. Topical studies, answering common objections against the core doctrines of the Christian faith, and live Q&A. So that said, as you see, I titled this live Q&A session and JWs. So if you have a question, ask me now, right, before I could begin a topic. Because like I said, I just decided to get into the saddle again because I was planning on going live these previous days, but because I'm just feeling so down, so depressed, like almost like panicking, you know, because it's like I'm sick and alone. You know, I said, you know what? The heck with it. I'm going to try to do something today, right? Try to do something today to get out of this rut by the grace of the Holy Spirit so I can get into the Word of God and have the Word of God refresh us, not just you but me, that the Word of God will wash us, will be washed by the Word of God, washed in the blood of Jesus, revived, rejuvenated, refreshed by the Holy Spirit. All right. So let's see what kind of questions. Yes, if I start doing expository preaching, I'm going to start with the Gospel of John. In fact, I'll probably give you a foretaste right now. Yes, Jamal Williams, I have articles on Micah 5 verse 2, but I don't know what your specific question is in regards to Micah 5 verse 2. There are no missing years of Jesus Christ. It's funny. There are no missing years when it comes to the historical Jesus. Right? So when you say missing years, what missing years? Everyone believes in predestination, Chris Spinelli. The question is, how do you define predestination? All right. Yeah, I think I could. I got a couple of good ones. A couple of good questions. We're going to try and unpack them. Number one, let me answer this real quickly. No, I don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. I don't believe that. Okay. Another question is, I have talked with the JW. He said, who Jesus makes the blind make see and... 
Uh, your English is not coherent, Jesus is my God. I cannot understand what you just wrote. I have talked with a JW. He said, who Jesus make the blind, make see, and resurrect the people. It was not him. It was the Father. Okay. Now I see. All right. Let's let's do that. Let's kill several birds with one stone. So, Ken Dudin Weg, do you have a specific question you want me to answer for you? Uh, Phoenix Baker, I used to believe in particular redemption, definite atonement, limited atonement. I don't believe it anymore. I rejected it because of the exegesis of the passages, not because of the logic, but because of exegesis. So what I'm going to do is we're going to kill several birds with one stone. I want to give you a foretaste what I want to do in the near future if the triumph God blesses me with your prayers, that he keeps me free, keeps me safe, keeps me healthy and holy unto the Lord Jesus. I'm going to be doing book by book expository preaching, God willing, on this channel where we go through a book of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, topical studies, more <clears throat> refuting typical objections in the core doctrines of the Christian faith, because I'm still not done with 1 Corinthians 15, 28. Now, let's answer the question. Someone had just asked me the question. Did Joe's witnesses say, it's not Jesus who raised the dead, but the Father did? Is that Was that the question? Let me just repeat. Why shouldn't refer to it as the wilderness of sin? Ron Hare, why are you making a big deal over an English term? In Hebrew, the word sin doesn't have the same word as sin as you know it, meaning missing the mark. Someone just asked me or told me that the Jehovah's Witnesses say, uh, Mason G., I'll give you and the Jehovah Witness $50 million to show me where the cherub forgives sins. And it's not an angel. Here we go again. Boy, it's been a while and I'm getting tired again. Pray for God to rejuvenate me, refresh me. Number one, the cherubim are a class of spirit creatures that are distinguished from the myriads of angels in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 4 and 5. Now, Mason, pay attention carefully. Don't upset me by asking me something that I have repeatedly discussed, and you've been here before, so either I'm a terrible teacher or you're a terrible listener. I'm going to blame you and say you're a terrible listener. Let's listen, please, for the glory of the chime God. You need to learn this stuff. Okay. If you read Revelation chapter 4 and 5 carefully, there are three classes of spirit creatures. You're still a terrible listener anyway, Mason G. Even though it's your first time, so you say. You're still a terrible listener. Three classes of spirit creatures. Listen. The 24 elders. Are you listening, Mason G? The four living creatures and angels. If you... Study the description of the four living creatures in Revelation chapter 4 and 5. They are the same as the seraphim of Isaiah chapter 6. They are the same as the seraphim of Isaiah 6, and they are described in the same way that Ezekiel describes the cherubim in Ezekiel chapter 10. So, folks, please do me a favor. By the grace of the triumph God, when you have an opportunity... Read Isaiah chapter 6, Ezekiel chapters 1 and 10, Ezekiel chapters 1 and 10, then Revelation chapter 4 and 5. You're going to see the four living creatures are the same creatures that Isaiah calls the seraphim and that Ezekiel calls the cherubim. That tells you the seraphim are the cherubim, the cherubim are the seraphim. The 24 elders, the four living creatures who are the seraphim, slash cherubim, are distinguished from angels. So in a sense, the seraphim of Isaiah 6 are not angels. However, the way the Bible functions, it will often use a term in a broader sense that includes various classes of creatures. So there is a sense in which you can refer to all the inhabitants of heaven as angels. You can call them the angelic host, angels. Even though 
in a more restrictive sense, angels are different from the 24 elders and the four living creatures. So far, are you with me? Before I move on to the next point, I may have to repeat that again. Okay. Revelation 4 and 5 mention three classes of spirit creatures. Three. Don't take my word for greeted. 24 elders. That's one. Four living creatures or four living beasts. That's two. And angels. That's three. So the four living creatures are different from angels who are different from the 24 elders. So... If you read the description as the Holy Spirit helps me to help you and let me know I'm not boring you, I'm not torturing you, I'm blessing you and educating you by the grace of God's Spirit because I want us to know the Bible and live it out for the glory of Christ. Okay, The four living creatures that John sees in Revelation chapter 4 and 5, they are described in the same way of the seraphim that Isaiah sees in Isaiah 6 and the cherubim that Ezekiel sees in Ezekiel chapter 1 and 10. Ezekiel chapter 1 and 10. That means the four living creatures are the seraphim, the cherubim. That means the seraphim are the cherubim, the cherubim are the seraphim. And they are the four living creatures that John sees in Revelation 4. Is that clear so far? The seraphim are the cherubim. And they're shapeshifters. They can change their sh shape because God has created them with the potency, the ability to change their shape. The seraphim are the cherubim. The cherubim are the seraphim. And according to John, Revelation 4 and 5, those are the four living creatures. Connection good for everyone else? No, Irene. Nowhere does the word seraphim appear in the New Testament. You're not paying attention either, sister. I'm going to repeat it one more time. One more time. The seraphim of Isaiah 6. The word seraphim is not used in the New Testament. It's not used in the New Testament. Thank you, worshipers. Thank you, my brother or sister. I don't know if you're a sister or brother. Seraphim, Isaiah 6. Cherubim, Ezekiel 1 and 10. Four living creatures. Of Revelation chapter 4 and 5. So I don't know why, Irene, you got that the seraphim are in the New Testament. Where? The word seraphim is not used in the New Testament. Neither is the word cherubim. Did everyone get it now? Worshippers got it. Everyone got it? Is that clear? Before I move on? So I repeat myself more than once. Because I know we have to go slow. Okay. So what's the point? If you read Revelation 4 and 5, how many class of spirit creatures in Ch Revelation chapters 4 and 5? How many? Let's see if you guys are paying attention. Thank you, Masori. Masayori. Thank you. Th yes, three. Uh, Arthur, where'd you get four? Mention the fourth one, Arthur. Where'd you get four? Arthur said four. Where? Name the four for me. Everyone else got it? Everyone else got it? Three, right? I'm trying, still figuring out where did Arthur knee cube got four? 24 elders, the four living creatures, and the angels. Okay. Who are the four living creatures according to the Old Testament? I am talking about Revelation. How many class of creatures in Revelation, Arthur? Where'd you get four? Who are the four living creatures according to the Old Testament? They are the seraphim that Isaiah saw. They are the cherubim that Ezekiel saw. I don't know if Jeffrey Dahmer is playing games with me because I remember him. He's been here before. 
I don't know why you're mentioning Babylon and Persia. What's Persia and Babylon got to do with the talk? Jeffrey Dama, help me understand your logic. What does Je uh, Persia and Babylon have to do with my, my question? Phoenix Baker, I'll give you $10 million if you can show me where Revelation tells you that the 24 elders are the deceased saints, the 12 tribe leaders and 12 disciples. Where'd you get that from? Where does Revelation say that? Hold on, folks. By the grace of the triune God, we're going to maintain order by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Christ because people are everywhere. Where do you get, Phoenix Baker, where do you get that the 24 elders are the 12 tribe leaders and the 12 apostles? Phoenix Baker, if I have to show you that Matthew 19, 28 has nothing to do with Revelation, brother, you know you're going to get blocked, right? Where does Matthew 19, 28 connect them with the 24 elders of Revelation, when in Matthew 19, 28, it's 12 apostles sitting on 12 thrones, one of whom is Judas. Why would you go to Matthew 19, 28? It has nothing to do with Revelation chapter 4. Jeff Dahmer, you need to go, friend. Send Jeff Dahmer somewhere else. This is not for him, this YouTube channel. Because he's, he's boasting about his degrees and how great of a theologian he is. So, Phoenix Baker, I'm going to give you another chance. Here's my question. Where do you find in Revelation that the 24 elders are said to be the 12 tribe leaders, 12 sons of Jacob, and the 12 apostles? One more chance, buddy, before I move on. One more chance. Phoenix Baker, wasting our time. Okay. I think I wasn't clear the first two times. All you get in Matthew 19, 28 is 12 thrones, not 24 thrones. So you got busted. Matthew 19, 28 does not help you. So you got a final chance to prove your assertion. Where do you find in Revelation that the 24 elders are the 12 tribe leaders and the 12 apostles? Final chance. Okay, Matthew 19, 28 refutes you, your distortion of Revelation 4, because all you find there are 12 thrones that the 12 apostles sit on, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Where do you get 24? Okay, let's try this again, Phoenix, because you're going to get blocked right now. Where does it say the 12 tribes sit on 12 thrones with the 12 apostles of the Lamb? Final chance. Instead of being humble enough to say you're mistaken, you don't know what you're talking about, you're trying hard and you're embarrassing yourself. I don't care how you said it. Final chance. Where do you find that the 12 tribe leaders sit on 12 thrones? Matthew 19, 28 doesn't prove your point. It says only 12 apostles will judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Where then do you get 24 thrones out of that? Final chance, Phoenix. You're wasting everyone's time because of your arrogance. Get him out of here. Bye-bye. Don't come back here. Okay. Okay. Send him out of send him right away. Okay. One more time. Let me repeat to every one of you. Let me repeat it for you guys. Please help me to help you. It's been a while. Okay. It's been a while. I haven't been on. Let's make it easy for every one of us. Arthur McCube or Nicube, please don't pontificate. The reason why I'm going to tell you don't pontificate, it's because nowhere in Revelation are we told the identity of the 24 elders. So when you tell me Old and New Testament elders, what Old Testament elders? The 12 tribe leaders? What New Testament? Stop pontificating. John doesn't tell us. Everything is guesswork. You're guessing. Because that assumes that the 24 elders are human creatures 
as opposed to be, being spirit creatures. Can you show me anywhere in Revelation 4 that those 24 elders are human creatures who are now enthroned in heaven as opposed to spirit creatures, not human beings? You see how easy it is just to stop pontificating? Okay. You see, folks, why you need to really think biblically, critically, right? And not just buy into anything and everything someone tells you. When they tell you the 24 elders are the 12 apostles and 12 tribal leaders, where did you get that from? Now, this is a teaching moment. I'm teaching you how not to interpret the Bible and not just buy into anything you hear. Where did you get that from? Where are you told these 24 elders are human creatures, disembodied human beings, human beings that have died and now reign in heaven as disembodied spirit creatures on 24 thrones? Where? You with me there? Mason, because I don't like you and I want you out of here. Get out of here, Mason. Get lost. I don't like you. Get out of here. Because you just, your face upsets me. Get him out of here. Okay. Anyway, coming back. Miko, you want to go too? Send Miko. No, Mason, you're not a fan of my work. Because if you're a fan of my work, then you know how I run things. I run a tight ship. I don't like chiefs who pontificate, who don't answer directly, but tap dance and try to justify their ignorance. So now who's next to go? I haven't been here for a while. We're going to clean house. Arthur, Nikyu, which part of no one knows the answer isn't clear? Do you guys understand if the Bible doesn't tell you who they are, then everything is guesswork. Everything is guesswork. You can guess that they are human creatures, but Revelation doesn't tell you. Therefore, if it doesn't tell you, don't pontificate. You get my point? Don't pontificate. In other words, don't Say what it is if the text doesn't tell you what it is or who they are. Yeah, bring him back, Protestant, if you can. Are you with me there, folks? Is it making sense? You understand? Let's keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Or better yet, keep it simple, saints. Keep it simple, saints. All we know from Revelation chapter 4 and 5 is that there are 24 elders, four living creatures, and angels. That's it. End of story. That's it. End of story. Right? If John wanted you to know that the 24 elders are disembodied human beings, disembodied meaning human beings that physically died and their spirits are in heaven, and they're the 12 tribal leaders and the 12 apostles, he would tell you, but he didn't. We don't know who they are. And most likely, they're not human creatures. They're spirit creatures. And then, again, if you go with 24 elders, that coincides to the 24 divisions of the Levitical priestly orders, right? If you study the Old Testament careful, Carefully, there were 24 divisions among the Levitical priests, right? Divisions, 24 divisions where they would serve in the temple. This could be their spiritual counterpart, that these 24 elders are 24 priests that serve in the heavenly temple, right? You with me there? Arthur and McNoob, do you you need to leave the page? You know that, right? This is not for you, Arthur Nick, Nicoob. 
you know, this, this channel is not for you, right? Because this channel is about going into the Bible in depth and proving our position from Scripture. Right? Everyone with me there? Anyway, what was the point? This took longer than it needed to. What was the point? The point was this. Here's the point. Here's the point. A simple point takes too long. Yeah. Oh, man. Doesn't help that I'm still not fully recovered from my sickness. It makes things much harder. Anyway, coming back to the issue. Let's come back to the issue. The simple point is this. The four living creatures of Revelation 4 and 5 are described just like the seraphim of Isaiah chapter 6 and the cherubim of Ezekiel chapter 1 and 10. Did we get that part so far? Uh, Kevin, you know you got to go, right? You got to get out of here? You got to leave too? Can you get rid of this guy too? Don't come back here. I don't want people like you here. I don't know how much clear I can make it. Okay, can you send this guy out of here? Thank you, guys. Okay. Coming back to the issue for the rest of you, for the rest of you, the four living creatures are described the same way Isaiah describes the seraphim in Isaiah 6, and Ezekiel describes the cherubim in Ezekiel chapter 1 and 10. Okay? Clear? Let's end it at that point. Okay? Let's end at that point. Folks, let, help me to help you. Guys, trust me when I say I don't want to be unnecessarily offensive and cause any of you to stumble. I want to glorify Jesus Christ. I want to make Jesus Christ happy. I want to honor him and be a blessing to you and love you. Don't tell me how to run the channel. Respect my wishes when I say don't pontificate. Don't make statements on passages that are obscure as if you know the answer to a passage that has perplexed and puzzled Christians for 2,000 years. You with me there? Can you help me to help you? I mean, man, you've been on this channel long enough to know I don't tolerate chiefs who want to chime in and pontificate and argue. And people telling me, slow down or be gentle. You won't get more gentle than me if, if you listen, if you humble yourself, and you wait patiently and not pontificate because this is the time for me to help you share the wisdom that God has given me. And if I'm wrong, may God save you from those errors and correct them in me and not to repeat them. And I've told you, and I'll say it again, do not take anything I say for granted. Hear me out first. You haven't even heard me out. Go back and then study the passage and say, ah, he was wrong here. Amen. I'm not a perfect interpreter of the Bible. The Holy Spirit is. But I'm not going to put up with, as I get older, I become more impatient because time is fleeting. I may die tonight. I may die tomorrow. Jesus may come down. Time is of the essence. We can't play games anymore and waste time. And I pray Jesus will give me the power to redeem the time and use it for his glory. I don't have time for Indians. I'm sorry, chiefs. Go somewhere else. Start your own YouTube channel. Go listen to someone else. Okay? Please, don't frustrate me so I don't frustrate you. I don't even know why we even discussed the issue of cherubim. That was a question, but I think the gentleman we sent him on his merry way. <sighs> yeah, Anna and Sheikha. Anyway, any other questions? I don't know if you're asking me a serious question. Sal is tripping. I don't know what you mean, Sal is tripping. I, I don't know how to answer a question that says, Do I think Jesus will come back? I, I don't know how to answer that question. Hebrews 1 8, three questions. Could you please comment on Deuteronomy 32? It's rendering in Dead Sea Scrolls 1 2. I don't know what you're asking me, Hebrews 1 8. Uh, and you're asking me about Matthew 19 2. What about Matthew 19, verse 2? Lisa, who are you talking to? Lisa. 
Shady, he's he's gonna come when he wants to come, but you know, you need to leave, right, Shady? Shady, you need to go. You need to make an exit and never make a second coming here. Shady aftermath. Right. Admins, we're having a field day today. Send Shady so no second coming for him. Okay. Okay, I'm chill trying to catch up with the questions. All right, my 15-year-old daughter is why are there. Uh, Gerson Pinto, you've been here when I answered that question, brother. You were here in the previous sessions because you're a regular. And we already answered that question for you. Did you forget, brother? Okay, what did Jesus mean when he said Matthew 11, 30? All right, I'm still looking for questions that I feel led to answer, and I'm not seeing any, to be honest. Right. I'm looking. Praise be to try and God. I was able to use your work to show a JW that I understand. Okay. I will use a JW. Kent, uh, what do you want to use the JW interlinear for? To do what? What exactly do you want me to explain about Psalm 82? I think that you're buying into the view of Michael Heiser. Is that it, Hebrews 1.8? It's obviously you're influenced by Michael Heiser and his view of the divine counsel. Is that what you're asking me? Hebrews 1.8? Is that what you're asking me about the divine counsel? I'm still waiting for Hebrews 1.8's uh, response. Yeah, guys. Let's see what's going to happen. So what's the reason? What do you need to know about Psalm 82 more specifically? Okay. Jamal, I'll answer your question. Who asked me about Micah chapter 5, verse 2? Yeah, I'm trying to field the questions. There are so many that went by so fast because we wasted time on Mason G, which I shouldn't have wasted time on. Who asked about Micah 5, verse 2? Someone asked me about Micah 5, verse 2. And I'm still trying to figure out Hebrews 1, 8. What do you want to know about Psalm 82? What's the point of Psalm 82? No, he's not the Antichrist. The Messiah for Muslims not the Antichrist. I don't know where you get this from, Sal. The Messiah for Muslims is Jesus, Isa ibn Maryam. Even though it's not the same Jesus, still, it's supposed to be the same Jesus. Yeah, Gemma, that's because of the translation you may use. Uh, the Jehovah's Witness Bible will say that he has an origin in Micah 5, verse 2. So you need to be familiar with passages and know what passages to use and not use. So do you want me to help you? Are you going to meet with a Jehovah's Witness? Are you going to meet with a Jehovah's Witness? No, Simeon L. Christ. See, here you did it again. You chimed in and said, that's the Dajjal. Folks, can you do me a favor? Why do you why are you guys so easily swayed by the latest sensational hype by preachers? Where did you get that the Mahdi is the Antichrist? Where'd you get that from, Simeon? Bill Thomas, that's easy to explain. You need to read that in light of the parallel. Matthew 10, 34, 36. It's really sad the state that the church finds itself in. Okay, it's really sad. I want you to hear this, that the church finds itself in in the West. Any and every sensationalistic preacher from Khan to I don't know who, they just spew anything that sounds new and fantastic. And Christians fall for it, get duped, and fall for it. What's wrong with the Christians here? Who told you that the Mahdi, who told you that the Mahdi is the Antichrist? The Mahdi is the figure that the Shia Muslims and the Sunni Muslims are waiting for. And you'll have some preachers tell you that's the Antichrist. And yet you got 
blind parrots, is that the word I'm looking for? Who will hear it, oh, 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 it, oh wow, what a revelation. That's so amazing. Ooh. Like a bunch of illiterate parrots. And not one of you think back, think enough to go back and study whether there's any validity to this claim. Okay. For those of you, and, and let me be honest when I say this, I get frustrated. God have mercy on me. For those of you who are stupid enough to buy into this, yes, stupid enough because of your biblical illiteracy. Let me ask you a question I want you to answer. According to Islam, the Mahdi, his name will be Muhammad, especially the Sunni sources. He's from the bloodline of Muhammad. The Mahdi will unite the Muslims against the Antichrist, the Dajjal. According to Muhammad, the Dajjal will be one eye, and he'll have on his forehead the letter, the word kafir written on it. And the Dajjal will claim to be God and do miracles. Now, let me ask you a question. Muhammad said, the Mahdi is from my bloodline. His name is Muhammad. Is that the Antichrist that the Bible warns against? Is that the Antichrist that the New Testament says will come? His name will be Muhammad. He'll be from the bloodline of Muhammad. Okay. Second question. Second question for all of you. Listen. Uh, GMS, you tone it down and shut your mouth before I muzzle you. Get out of here. Send him out of here. Get this dog out of here. GMS. Okay. Second question. Second question. Muhammad said the Antichrist will come and claim to be God and do miracles. All right. Do you think if the Mahdi comes and he claims to be God and does miracles, the Muslims will follow him or will see him as the Antichrist? Will they follow a man who claims to be God or will they see him for being the Antichrist that Muhammad said be careful of? Okay, so why in the world do you follow for the latest hype and arguments of people that say the Mahdi of Islam is the Antichrist that the Bible warns against? Where do you get this nonsense from? How can the Mahdi be the Antichrist that you are waiting for, according to New Testament, when the Mahdi of Islam will be named Muhammad, cannot claim to be God, because if he claims to be God, Muslims won't follow him, but will see him as the Antichrist. What are you guys talking about? Why do you guys follow and fall for such nonsense? And Iwalid Chopin, as now a Roman Catholic who's abandoned his Protestantism, who's abandoned his views of end time. Did you know that fascinating vision? Why do you think you don't hear Walid Shabbat lecturing anymore on Israel and the Antichrist? Because he became Roman Catholic. And do you know, fascinating vision, that in Roman Catholicism, the state of Israel has no role to play in the return of Christ? So this is why, this is why Walid Shabbat has gone into hiding because now he'll become an embarrassment if he comes out and says, all my theories on Israel and the Antichrist are wrong because now I'm a Roman Catholic and I renounce Protestantism. And because you're the sucker that fell for it. Fascinating vision. That's my point. You're the sucker who fell for the latest hype and sensation by people who bilked Christians out of their money and became famous for being end-time prophecy experts, one of whom was Walid Shabbat, who's now a Roman Catholic who won't talk about those views anymore because he doesn't believe those views because now he follows Rome. You got it now? So now fascinating vision. 
Do you still follow Walid Shobat's theories when he himself has now abandoned those theories because now he's a Roman Catholic? In Catholicism, the state of Israel has no role to play in the end times leading to the return of Christ. That means now as a Roman Catholic, he has to have abandoned all the views that he once held. You didn't know that? Go to Shobat.com. Walid Shobat, type in. Well, each about Roman Catholicism, him and his son, Theodore, are diehard Roman Catholic apologists. In fact, there's a YouTube video where Walid Shobat and Theodore Shobat are actually in a debate. But do you remember that the youngest girl in the Brady Bunch? The Brady Bunch girl, what was her name? The youngest one? Was her name Jan? This one. I forget her. Anyway, she was on a show because now she's become involved in politics. She's become involved in politics and uh, against Islam. She was on a show with another gentleman. I think he's an atheist. I forget his name. Walid Shabbat and Theodore not only tore into them, but were rude and nasty. And Walid Shabbat lost his temper on the show and called the guy, you son of a B.I.H. It's on, on YouTube. Custom out. You son of a B.I.H. I'm giving you the G-rated version. Do you know that? And no, the Shah does not 666. Yeah, first last. Do it. Wally Chabot and the Brady Bunch girl, the youngest one. It's not Cindy. I think the youngest one, her name was Jan. You're kidding me, right? Revelation 22, 13. Simon Altaf has a YouTube page attacking Jesus as a false messiah. He's abandoned his faith in Jesus, Simon Altaf. Simon Altaf is now an anti-Christian who says Jesus is a fake messiah and he's converted to Judaism. This is what you guys get for following these clowns. No, it's the youngest one, Protestant believer. The youngest of the Brady girls. It is the youngest one. I don't know her name on the show. Okay. Here, I hope I'm not wasting your time talking about these issues, but these niches have come up. You know what this means? You guys got to stop, honestly. I may sound mean and rude, but you guys got to stop being biblically illiterate. It's disgusting, man. It's sickening, the stuff you guys fall for. The Mahdi is the Antichrist. Do you have, have you studied the Islamic sources to know that the Mahdi cannot claim to be God and cannot be worshipped as God? Otherwise, Muslims will reject him. But according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the man of lawlessness, the man of sin, will make himself out to be God and defy the God of heaven and sit in the seat of God pretending to be God, and according to Revelation 13, the beast, the Antichrist, will demand to be worshipped as God and do miracles to deceive people into thinking he's God. So how can that be the Mahdi? How do you guys believe the Mahdi is the Antichrist of the New Testament when Muhammad says the Mahdi, his name is Muhammad from my bloodline, and the last thing he will do is claim to be God, and demand to be worshipped because then the Muslims will reject him, saying, no, then you are not the Mahdi, you're the Antichrist. Because in the Hadith, Bukhari, Muslim, Muhammad says one of the signs of the Antichrist, he's one eye, he has the word kafir on his forehead, and will claim to be God and demand to be worshipped as God and do miracles to prove he's God. How in the world do you want Muslims to follow the Mahdi if the Mahdi claims to be God, when Muhammad said, don't follow anyone who claims to be God. Are you, guys, what's wrong with you? Honestly, you fall for this hype? This is why people laugh at us. The Left Behind series made a, made a joke out of Christians. 
the great late planet Earth, Hal Lindsey, where I had to constantly update it because the dating. First, Jesus was coming in the 80s. Turn up. We make ourselves the laughing stock of unbelievers who laugh and mock and say we're a bunch of idiots, bunch of fools, right? Because of the way we interpret end time prophecy. So are you still convinced the Mahdi is the Antichrist? Go ahead, convince me. Convince me the Antichrist is the Mahdi, Mahdi Antichrist, when Mahdi can't say he's God. Muslims won't follow him. But the Antichrist, according to New Testament, has to claim to be God and demand to be worshipped. Ask the Shia if he'll do abrogation. Are you with me there? Can we stop this nonsense now? Can we stop the nonsense? The nonsense of trying to find Antichrist everywhere. First it was the European Union. Before that it was the Pope. Now it's the Mahdi. Who's next? Donald Trump? According to Democrats, he is the Antichrist, right? Okay, so can we agree, can we agree to stop this nonsense? Can we, in fact, you guys are so interested in end time prophecy when you haven't even figured out all the other stuff that the Bible commands us to. In other words, how versed are you in the essential doctrines of the Christian faith, like the Trinity, the deity of Christ, his humanity, the person of the Holy Spirit, the doctrine of salvation, sanctification? Why do we get baptized? What's baptism? What's the role of baptism? What's its purpose? Are there various baptisms? And, and how do we take the Lord's Supper? How many times a year do we take the Lord's Supper? And what is the Lord's Supper? And does it become these issues? that are vitally important for us to know we are ignorant of because we'd rather spend time deciphering end time prophecy and making ourselves look like fools and idiots and stupid morons to an unbelieving world right am i am i wrong you see so so can we stop this nonsense? The, the Mahdi is the Antichrist. No, it's, it's an embarrassment, man. I know there are some well-meaning people that believe this. That's okay. God bless them. But come on. It's an embarrassment when you talk like this because it shows, number one, you don't know the New Testament, and number two, you don't know Islam. Number one, let me repeat again. Let me repeat again. According to the New Testament, the Antichrist will make himself out to be God. Can I show you that? And will demand to be worshipped as God. Can I show you that? Can I show you that? Exactly, they're not going to believe the Shemir Salim. They're going to sing, we're a bunch of idiots because we've assigned the role to Antichrist to everyone under the sun. Henry Kissinger and then... Well, what was it? Uh, oh, oh, Obama, Barack Obama. That was the latest thing. See, he's a Muslim. He's the Antichrist. Make ourselves look like a bunch of idiots. Right? Bunch of idiots. Stupid idiots. People laugh at us. Right? For a while, it was Barack Obama. Right? But now let me show you. Antichrist will claim to be God and demand to be worshipped as God. Now, Jamal, I'll come back and help you use the Jehovah Witness Bible to prove the Trinity. Just wait. Wait. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Yeah, Bernie Sanders, right? Yeah, yeah. Guys, just give me one second. I got to get something. Yeah, Urdukin. Yeah, that was another one. Hold on a second. One second. I'll be right back.
Let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. <clears throat> Let's read it. Now we beseech you, brethren. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. <clears throat> Pay attention and read, folks. Don't get, don't get lost. That ye may not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Don't let anyone deceive you that the day of Christ is at hand. It's not here yet. Certain signs must precede his coming. One of the signs, here's one of the signs that must take place before Jesus returns. Watch. Look what he's going to say. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now notice what he's going to do. Pay attention to four. Pay attention to four. Okay? Let's read it. Who opposeth and exalteth, exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God, he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. See? Antichrist is going to claim to be God and oppose any and every other God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, right? And now you know that what withhold, withhold him that he might be, okay? Let's go back again, verse 6. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Now notice 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. In other words, the one who's going to let him be manifested will let him be manifested. We don't know what that is. So don't speculate again. Please do not speculate. Paul doesn't tell us until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay. <clears throat> Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power of signs and lying wonders, right? Let's read, okay, verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Okay, folks. Let me repeat again. The Mahdi cannot claim to be God and demand worship that goes against Islamic theology. No Muslim will follow him. But the Antichrist will claim to be God, sit in the seat of God, make himself out to be God. Are you still convinced by these end time prophecy experts the Mahdi is the Antichrist? Still convinced? Anyone? Are you still going to now tell me? See, Gerson Pinto is not getting it either. Muhammad, though is deified, claims to be a man, a sinful man, an imperfect man, no more, no less. And he says, there is no God but Allah. Okay? Okay. Now, let me now give you another one. Revelation 13. Let's break it down. Let's read the first 13 verses. Revelation 13, verses 1 to 13. Muhammad didn't construct any mosque in Jerusalem. There, Muhammad died before that happened. So can you see this is again misinformation? You see the point? This is again misinformation. Now read Revelation 13, 1 to 13. Read with me. Guys, read. The beast who's the man of sin. Okay, guys, we got to read now. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. John later explains what that means. And upon his horns, ten crowns. Those are ten kings. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, 
and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And <clears throat> the dragon gave him his po power and his seat and great authority. Okay. Some of these allusions are to the book of Daniel, bear, lion, so on and so forth. Okay. Let's read. Keep reading with me. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. So he had a wound, a head, one of the heads, seven, that was wounded. Okay, died. Mortal wound. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon. So worship. Which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Now, if you don't know the Old Testament, this is blasphemy and mockery of God. Because the Bible says, who is like unto Jehovah our God? Who is like unto you, O Lord? Answer, no one's like unto you. So he's mocking the true God. And they're mocking the true God by ascribing to the beast a specific characteristic that belongs to God alone. Who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to, to continue 40 and 2 months. Almost done. Almost done. Let's read. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And power was given him over all kindred and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity. Thank you. God bless you guys for that, for the super chat. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. Now pay attention. Verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Okay. Now watch. And he exerciseth exerciseth <clears throat> all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come from, from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Now, let's read 14 to 18. Revelation 13 verses 14 to 18. I have no idea what you're asking me. Why are we holy that Islam will obey their own words? Now watch here. And deceive of them that dwell on the earth by the means of the miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword, right, and did live. Now watch. And he had power. Pay attention, folks. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, right? And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here it is wisdom. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score and six, 666. Six, six. Question. Here's a second passage that says, the beast will demand to be worshipped as God, and all must worship him in opposition to God and view him as their God. Do you guys catch it or no? Do you guys catch it or no? It is, James Payne. Now you understand why I'm getting angry, James Payne? Why I get angry and frustrated and lose my patience and ask God to forgive me, James Payne, and the Lord Jesus to wash me and give me the grace because I'm frustrated. And the older I get, the more frustrated I get because of the level of biblical illiteracy, ignorance. Now, Masori, you put two. Which part you didn't get? Okay, you got it right. So, folks, let me repeat again. Let me repeat again. The Muslim sources, don't take my word for it. Please don't. Ask the Shia. Ask the Sunni. 
Can Mahdi demand to be worshipped? Astaghfirullah. Can he say he's an ilah, a god? Astaghfirullah. If someone says he's the Mahdi and demands that the Muslims worship him, they'll say that's the Dajjal, that's the Antichrist, we will never follow him. So where do you get the Mahdi as the Antichrist? Is it making sense now? Is it sinking in? Is it sinking in? This is nonsense. We need to stop. Yeah. You, Marshall, you mean Muhammad, the pedophile, filthy dog, son of Satan, who used to beat up his women? You filthy dog? Dogs are cleaner than you and your prophet. Anyway. Okay, now everyone with me here? No, it's not so much that Mahdi is imaginary. Mahdi is not the Antichrist. Mahdi is not the Antichrist. You with me there? That's even assuming a Mahdi shows up. In fact, you give Muhammad much credit. If a Mahdi shows up, that means that's a prophecy of Muhammad being fulfilled. Because that Mahdi ain't the Antichrist. So what are you guys really rooting for? That Muhammad's prophecy of the Mahdi turns out to be true? Is that what you're rooting for? Is that what you're rooting for? The Mahdi of Islam is not the Antichrist. So if a Mahdi shows up, claims to be Muhammad, that's a prophecy that Muhammad uttered centuries ago that fulfilled. So what are you trying to argue here? And what does it mean when it comes out of the pit too? Literally out of the pit? Or is it saying that the Antichrist will be possessed by an evil, wicked, unclean spirit? Exactly, James Payne. But the problem is, because it is enticing, exciting, sensationalistic to try to connect new stuff. Mahdi of Islam is the Antichrist. And everyone jumps. <gasps> Ooh, oh, wow, wow. Uh, and then send ninety nine ninety five for my VHS or my DVD or my audio series on that so you can get all that information. Ship it handling is free. And you make these people rich. It's because of naive, naive, and can I be honest with you guys out of my frustration? Naive, stupid Protestants who buy into the latest sensationalistic hype and misinterpretation of the Bible, right? Right? That you made people like Walid Shabbat rich and famous. Walid Shabbat for years would go on the <clears throat> lecture circuit showing his great insights. And la most of his stuff is laughable and pathetic and a shameful butchering of the Old Testament. Right? Convincing people that the Mahdi is the Antichrist and Islam will rise and that's the Antichrist system and oppose Israel. And now, Walid Shobat became a Roman Catholic and as a Roman Catholic, he has to abandon all those teachings. Do you know that? you know why? Because in Roman Catholicism, the state of Israel does not exist to fulfill prophecy. Do you know that? The Roman Catholic Church does not recognize the modern state of Israel as fulfilling prophecy. It has nothing to do with prophecy. So now that he's a Roman Catholic, do you think he's going to be? Why do you think he disappeared? What happened to him? Folks, where is he? Where is he? Why did he disappear? Why isn't he lecturing in Protestant churches anymore? Why isn't he teaching about the Antichrist being the Mahdi? And Islam being the Antichrist system. And it's going to pose Israel, God's people. Because he doesn't believe that anymore. All right? Yeah, Andrew here. Hold on, Andrew. On David Wood Live? I want to add you here too, bro. You're my homie too. He doesn't believe that anymore.
Go to Showbot.com, Wally Showbot. So now, guys, can I ask you a question? What happened to all those years? What, almost 20 years? Almost 20 years. He's live now? Is the, David's not live now, right? No, not right now. What happened for 20 years of Walid Shabot preaching this? Oh, he is live? Oh, man. All right. You guys want me to shut down so you guys can go there? Or do you want me to continue? Yeah, okay. Should I continue? All right, I'll continue. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about Joe's witnesses in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, the the yeah, 55-minute apologist. Okay, now, what happened to all that teaching, 20 years, books, DVDs, and videos, now all flush them down the toilet. Flush them down the toilet, folks. You know why? He doesn't believe that anymore. Did you know that? He doesn't believe that anymore. And you know what's sad? You know what made him famous and rich? Protestants. It was only Protestant churches that invited him. He wasn't invited to Orthodox churches, and he wasn't invited to Roman Catholic churches. Do you know why? Netta's here. She's Orthodox. They don't believe any of that stuff. The Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church do not believe the modern state of Israel is a fulfillment of prophecy. Do you know that? It's not just the Roman Catholic and the Orthodox. There are some Protestants that believe that as well, right? Some Protestants that are amil or postmill, they too don't believe that the modern state of Israel is a fulfillment of prophecy. So you understand the fault lies with you guys, you Protestant evangelicals, especially you Protestant evangelicals. You guys are embarrassing Christianity when you fall for every hype and every new sensationalistic interpretation of end-time prophecy, you make us look like a bunch of braying asses. It's not just instead of Christ. It is in opposition to Christ. He opposes Christ. Yes, I, I think I did. I did a show where he was on. Okay, it's the Protestant evangelicals, folks. It's the Protestant evangelicals that end up embarrassing Christianity because you fall for every hype. Can we stop that? And what happened to Grant Jeffrey? You sure you love him? What happened to his theories? What happened to his views? What He disappeared too. Why? What happens to these end time prophecy experts, Ham Sunshine? What happened to Hal Lindsey? They disappear. You know why? Because they end up embarrassing themselves, humiliating themselves, because they're so off the mark when it comes to end time prophecy, they disappear. But you know what? They've already sold their books and their videos and their DVDs. What happened to them? No, he didn't say Antichrist is spirit. He's talking about the spirit of Antichrist. What do, what do you want me to think of Herbert Armstrong when he was a heretic, Alex? He denied the Trinity. He didn't believe the Holy Spirit is God. He believed in the God family. Yeah. Ham Sunshine, so are you judging me for judging a servant of Christ? Are you that stupid to make that comment? So you just judge me for judging a servant of Christ, showing you're a hypocrite and you're stupid too? And if I show you in the Bible where Christians judged others, even Christians like Paul condemned Peter as a hypocrite, will you shut up and stop eating ham because you see what it's doing to your brain? Right? Okay, now Jamal Williams, he wanted me to help him show a Jehovah Witness. Bill Thompson, you really want me to comment on this guy? The guy with the blood moon and all that? Uh, Ham Sunshine, yes what? You want me to show you from Scripture where Paul condemns Peter by name in a letter as a hypocrite so that you're a hypocrite for falsely accusing me of judging a servant? That means you just condemn Paul. So are you a better Christian than Paul was or are you just being stupid, Ham Sunshine? Okay, coming back to the issue. 
Jamal, are you still here? Sorry, guys. This was a rough first session. I haven't been on for a while. Slowly, I'll get back into the groove of things. Slowly, we'll pick up stuff. It's been a while. I'm still not completely whole. Pray for miracle by the grace of God, February 10 and February 19. Anyway, is Jemma Williams here? Did he want me to help him with the Jehovah Witnesses? How to show the Jehovah Witnesses from their Bible that Jesus is Jehovah? Okay, you really? Okay. Jemma Williams, we're going to use the Jehovah Witness Bible. Okay, so you ready? You want me to help you? And I have articles on this. Are you ready, Jemma Williams? Guys, now I'm going to segue, help you to use the Jehovah Witness Bible to prove your position. Protestant believer, you have access to the Jehovah Witness Bible? Okay. Go to John 118. John 118. Remember, their Bible is a Bible perversion. It doesn't translate accurately all times. It often mistranslates. But be that as it may, I'm still going to show you how to use their Bible to prove that Jesus is Jehovah. Are you ready now? Are you guys ready? John 118. This is the Jehovah Witness translation, which you can read online for free, jw.org. You go to jw.org, and their Bible versions are online for free. Here, John 118. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is at the Father's side is the one who has explained him. Okay. Notice how... They translate the word God. Notice here the G is lowercase. So Jesus is a lowercase G God. Did you catch it? Post it one more time so you can catch it. But that's okay. Work with it. That's okay. Okay. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who's at the Father's side is the one who has explained him. Now, folks, here's where I need you to really listen. I need you to listen. This says, no one has seen God at any time. At any time in history, no one has seen God apart from the only begotten God who is at the Father's side explaining him. So understand what you just read. Jesus is the one who reveals God, makes God known, right? And allows people to see God because apart from the Son, you cannot see God. You cannot understand God. You cannot comprehend God. That's what it just said right there. No one has seen God at any time. At any time. Right? Right? Apart from Christ, you cannot see God, understand God, comprehend God, know God, and have a relationship with God. Apart from Christ. So this is what you do. Jamal Williams. Say, okay. Emphasize at any time, right? They'll say yes. Who did Isaiah see in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 5? Because Lopez is excited, he's still not getting the point because he's hammering on the fact that seen means to perceive, and he's still not getting the point I'm trying to make with the Joe Witness. Follow with me so you understand what I'm trying to do. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw Jehovah sitting on a lofty and elevated throne, and the skirts of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were standing above him, each had six wings. Each covered his face with two and covered his feet with two, and each of them would fly about with two. And one called to the other, Holy, holy, holy is Jehovah of armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And the pivots of the thresholds, quivered at the sound of the shout, shouting, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe to me, I am as good as dead, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes, woe, woe is me, right? I am as good as dead, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, Jehovah of armies himself. Question for the Jehovah Witness. Since no one can see God apart from Jesus, only in Jesus, through Jesus, because of Jesus, you can see and comprehend God. Who exactly is the Jehovah that Isaiah saw? Who did he see?
Who did he see? I don't know how to answer Lopez. I'm like shocked at his answer, the father. Even though John 1.18 just said, apart from the son, the father cannot be seen. So Jamal, who did he see? Thank you. That's the first point you make. Say, he has to have seen Jesus because without Jesus, you cannot see God. Apart from Jesus, you cannot know God. Apart from Jesus, you cannot comprehend God. Apart from Jesus, God will not be seen. So who is the Jehovah that Isaiah saw? I'm not saying you can't see the Father. I'm saying apart from the Son, you cannot see the Father. That means for Isaiah to see Jehovah, he has to see Jesus in order to see Jehovah. So the Jehovah there has to be Jesus appearing to Isaiah. Did you get it? Exactly, Medic, you see. Did you get it, Jamal? Genesis 17, verse 1. Genesis 17, verse 1. Watch here. Pay attention to how I'm using their Bible against them. So, is my English clear or are you having a hard time following with me? When Abraham was 99 years old, Jehovah appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and prove yourself faultless. So, Jamal, Jehovah appeared to Abraham. And then Genesis 17, 22. Genesis 17, 22. Watch here. When God finished speaking with him, he went up from Abraham. So notice Jamal, pay attention. Jehovah's on earth. When he finished speaking with Abraham, he went up to heaven. Are you seeing that, folks? Jehovah appeared to him saying, I'm God Almighty. And then he left him and went up. Do you see that? That means Jehovah appeared on earth to Abraham. Jehovah appeared on earth to Abraham. Now, Exodus 6, verses 2 to 3. Exodus 6, verses 2 to 3. This is from the Jehovah Witness Bible. Watch here. Then God said to Moses, I am Jehovah. And I used to appear to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I used to appear. I used to show myself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, El Shaddai. But with regard to my name, Jehovah, I did not. God is talking about. Right. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Notice what you just read in Jesus name. You just read. I, Jehovah, showed myself, I appeared, and they saw me, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I appeared to them, showed myself to them as El Shaddai, God Almighty. Genesis 17, 1 and 22 says, Jehovah appeared to Abraham and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty, walk blameless before me. When he finished talking, Jehovah went up. So here, Jehovah, God is appearing to people Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's appearing to them visibly. He's appearing to them in a visible form, a visible shape. They're seeing Jehovah, right? Acts 7, verse 2. Acts 7, verse 2. Stephen replied, men, brothers, and fathers, listen. The God of glory appeared to our forefather Abraham while he was in Mesopotamia before he took, him, took up residence in Haran. Appeared. Okay, now let's go back to John 118 again. So you understand the argument I'm making against the Jehovah Witness. So Jamal, understand the argument I'm making. Watch here. John 118. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is at the Father's side is the one who has explained him. Now, John says, no one at any time. 
not even Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, could see God unless Jesus, the only begotten God, revealed God to them, explained God to them, allowed them to see God and comprehend God. Unless you believe New Testament contradicts the Old Testament, that means they must have been seeing Jesus as Jehovah God Almighty, or you have a contradiction. Because the Father will never appear apart from the Son. The Father will only appear in union with the Son. And no one can see the Father, even the Spirit, unless the Son allows you to see God. So the Son has to appear to you to give you access to God, to see God. You got it now or no? Did you guys get it? I want it to sink in before I move on. Exodus 24, verses 9 to 11. Exodus 24, verses 9 to 11. Watch here. Yeah. That's another verse, Exodus 33, 20. Not a, because if you go to 23, it says God said that you'll see his back. So that means you'll see his attributes. Anyway, let's not confuse the people because you introduced another passage. Exodus 24, 9 to 11. Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up. And they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was what seemed like a sapphire pavement, and it was as pure as the heavens themselves. He did not harm the distinguishment of Israel, and they saw a vision of the true God and ate and drank. Two points. Pay attention. It says they saw the God of Israel. Point number two. The Hebrew doesn't have the word vision. The Hebrew does not say they saw a vision of the true God. That's the deliberate mistranslation of the Jehovah Witness Bible. But even if you go with it, understand, even this translation, they saw a vision of the true God. Let's go with it. John 1.18 did not say no one can see God except in a vision. John 1.18 did not say no one's seen God except in a vision. So even this shameless mistranslation of Exodus 24.11 doesn't solve the problem for them because John 1 18 did not say no one can see God except in a vision only in a vision you can see God it says no one has seen God at any time period so even by mistranslating the Hebrew as a vision of the true God they're still stuck because John 1 18 says you cannot see God period unless the only begotten God reveals him makes him known So who did the Israelites see? Whose feet did they behold? Whose feet was riding what looked like pavement? In Exodus 24, 9 to 11. Who did they see? According to John 1, 18. According to John 1, 18. Jamal, you got it? Did Jamal get it? I don't know what Richard Lewis got to do with the topic about Jehovah's Witnesses and Jesus. Okay, but Jamal Williams, you got it, right? You got how you use John 1.18 to show that these Old Testament appearances of Jehovah God must include Jesus. It has to be Jesus appearing visibly. Must include Jesus. It has to be Jesus appearing visibly because apart from Jesus, you cannot see the Father or the Spirit or have access to the Father or the Spirit. So Jesus must definitely be the one appearing as Jehovah. And he allows you then, if he wants to, to see the Father and the Spirit. Jehovah is, Jesus is the Jehovah appearing visibly. Jesus is the Jehovah appearing visibly. Clear? Yeah, hit the like button, guys. We lost people. What happened? 
Right. Clear, everyone got it? Let me give you one more example, or I should give you two more. Let me give you two more examples that you can use for the Joe Witness for now. For now. And we'll do more in the upcoming weeks. Just pray for me to get out of this rut. I need miraculous intervention, folks, or I'm a goner. Thank you, Lopez, for reminding me, 180, 149, to make me more depressed. I appreciate you, brother. Keep it up. Keep up the encouragement. You're doing a great job. Right? Anyway, February 10, February 19, I need a miracle. Now, in Jesus' name, God, miraculous intervention, get me out of the courts. In Jesus' name. Now, with that said, are you ready, Jamal? Are you ready? You ready, my brother? You show them Psalm 99, Psalm 99, verses 5 to 7. Psalm 99, verses 5 to 7. Pay attention, Jamal. Psalm 99, 5 to 7. Exalt Jehovah our God and bow down at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, and Samuel was among those calling on his name. That's what I want you to pay attention to, Jamal. Among those calling on his name, calling on the name of Jehovah. They would call to Jehovah and he would answer them. He would speak to them from the pillar of the cloud. They kept his reminders and the decree that he gave to them. Now, let's go to Genesis 12, verse 8. Genesis 12, verse 8. Watch here. Thank you, Mr. Phil Fox. I need the prayers. I need a miracle. And God bless you for your love and support. February 10, February 19. I need a miracle. Please beg the Lord. Genesis 12, verse 8. Later he moved from there to the mountainous region east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to Jehovah and began to call on the name of Jehovah. Began to call on the name of Jehovah. Jamal, don't forget that. Old Testament saints call on the name of Jehovah and only Jehovah's name they call on. You cannot call on the name of someone else. You only call on the name of Jehovah. Calling on the name of Jehovah means praying to him, invoking him, asking him for your needs, praising him, blessing him, loving him. Genesis 21, 33. Yep, exactly, Carl, Carly Waller. I'll do a series on this this week if you're interested. Thank you, Jojo Master. Uh, I like that, Katie. Genesis 21, 33. After that, he planted a tam tamarisk tree at Beshir Beersheba, and there he called on the name of Jehovah, the everlasting God. Did you guys catch it? Called on the name of Jehovah, the everlasting God. So, Jamal, notice the pattern. You call on the name of Jehovah God only. You don't call on anyone else's name. Okay, now explain this to me, Jamal. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2. What about it? They don't believe in birthdays. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 2. Jamal, here you go, baby. To the congregation of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in union with Christ Jesus, called to be holy ones, together with all those everywhere who are calling on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours, who are calling on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. One more time. This is the Jehovah Witness Bible. Who are calling on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So wait, Paul. You're saying Christians everywhere, wherever they're Christians, wherever they're located, they are known for this practice. They are characterized for this practice of calling on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Thank you, Claire. God bless you. Did you catch that, Jamal? Jamal, did you catch it? Why are Christians, including Paul, calling on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? When the Old Testament says you are to call on the name of Jehovah and his name alone you call on.
What's going on here, folks? As perverted of a Bible translation this is, God is still in his sovereign goodness and pleasure, left a witness of who the true God is, even in this Bible. You guys want a few more or are you tired? You want to run to David Wood or you want me to give you a few more? A few more examples from their Bible. Who wants a few more examples? More? All right. Don't mind if I eat bread. Psalm 31, verse 5. Psalm 31, verse 5. Yeah, it's a blasphemous teaching. It's an old blasphemous one. Into your hand I entrust my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Jehovah, the God of truth. Pay attention. Jamal, everyone. At the point of death, the one who dies calls out to his God. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. Watch here. Then the dust returns to the earth, just as it was, and the spirit returns to the true God who gave it. Pay attention. Your spirit goes back to the true God who gave you your spirit. Into your hands I commit my spirit. You, you caught that, right? You guys caught it? Into your hands, I commit my spirit. The spirit returns to the true God who gave it. Now let's read Acts 7, 59. Acts 7, 59. Watch here. <clears throat> As they were stoning Stephen, he made this appeal. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. What? Stephen is about to die. They're stoning him to death. He's about to expire. And who does he call to receive his life force, his spirit? Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. But hey, Stephen, weren't you filled with the spirit? Yes. Don't you know the Old Testament inside and out? Yes. Don't you know that you are... To entrust your spirit to Jehovah alone. And at, when you face death, at the point of death, you cry out to Jehovah to in, receive your spirit. Yes. Why are you calling out to Jesus? Why are you saying to Jesus, receive my spirit? Why are Christians everywhere calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? When the Old Testament says this is something... That believers do only for Jehovah? Yep, this is the Jehovah Witness Bible. You guys want me to do a couple of series, a couple of talks on this this week, on using the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove Jesus is God? I can, if you want. Okay. Let me give you the final one for today. The final one for today. You ready? Okay, folks, then I will do a series using the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove Jesus is Jehovah and prove the Trinity. And by the way, if you go to my blog, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com, I have a series called Using the Jehovah's Witness Bible to Prove the Trinity. So just go on the search engine, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com, type in Jehovah's Witnesses, it'll pop up, use the information, print it out, pass it on to others. Print it out, pass it on to others. Search it. Jehovah's Witnesses, search engine, it'll come out. Answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. Answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. So do, do a search, Jehovah's Witnesses. I got a series of articles using the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove the Trinity. And do pray for the support, guys. I do need to bring in more support, especially for February, March, and April, because I'm moving into a new place. I'll be all alone until my brother joins me by April. So I need God and his grace to provide graciously for my needs and to take care of my daughters. And God saved me from this corrupt judge. 
Protect me in Jesus' name. So, guys, two big dates this month, February 10 and February 19. Unless the Lord intervenes, I can be in trouble. I need a miracle. I'm tired. I need deliverance, and I need my daughters in Jesus' name. Guys, pray for me. Fast for me. February 10, February 19. Right? Now, with that said, final one. Alex, you're going to have fun because I have a lot of information for you to refute Jehovah's Witnesses. Go to my blog and search Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay, Now, my cousin stopped speaking to me, but all your teaching was given to her. She could refute it. So she refuted me or she couldn't. Okay, you scared me for a minute. If she could refute me, then I'm about to retire and I'll become a monk. Now, final one. You want the knockout from the Jehovah's Witness Bible? Knockout. The one that's going to make them cry? Revelation 5, verse 13. Revelation 5, verse 13. Let's go. This is the Jehovah Witness Bible, folks. Read. And I heard every creature. Pay attention, Jamal. Notice the language. I heard every creature, not some. Every creature. And it's still, if you, didn't, you don't get it, in heaven and on earth and underneath the earth and on the sea and all things in them saying. Notice, John exhausts the language. Every created thing in the entire creation, no creature excluded, every creature, every creature everywhere. Pay attention. John exhausts the language. Every creature everywhere saying to the one sitting on the throne and to the lamb, be the blessing and the honor and the glory and the might forever and ever. Whoa. John has a vision in which every creature in the entire creation gives the Lamb the same exact worship that God the Father receives forever and ever. So Jesus the Lamb is separated from every created thing. Every creature is here. The Lamb is here on the side of the Creator, receiving the exact same worship the Creator receives by every creature in existence and forever. Do you catch it? This is their Bible, folks. Tell me how amazing Jesus the Lamb is that John says the Lamb is not part of creation. Every creature in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, in the seas, all creation everywhere is here, and the Lamb is separate from them. Because he's not part of them. He is the creator, one with the Father, which is why every creature gives him the same worship that the Father receives. <whistles> wow. Did you catch it, Jamal? Jamal, did you catch it? You better believe it's game over. You can't get around it. So John is seeing the ideal state, meaning the time in which every creature will and shall honor God and the Lamb, even those who are condemned to die because they're going to be forced to confess, you are worthy of worship. You, the Father, and the Lamb, the Son, are worthy of worship because of who you are. Though we've denied you and now we're under your wrath, we acknowledge you are God and worthy of worship. It's beautiful, ain't it? Everyone got it? Now notice I gave you just some of many verses from the Jehovah Witness Bible where God, the true God, the almighty God, has left even a witness of who he is in this perverted Bible. As perverted it is, 
God is still sovereign and almighty enough to use even that Bible to show them the truth of who he is. You guys got it? Is that clear? Now, someone had a question. Let me take a final question. And do you guys want me to do a series on this? Lord willing, start a series. And tomorrow, God willing, do part two on using the Jehovah Witness Bible to prove the Trinity. Jamal, I have a lot of series on that. He is literally the firstborn. But what does that mean for him to be the firstborn? Someone's telling me, Sam, can you point out the verse in Joseph that shows that Jesus is the Lamb? Yeah, I don't, uh, I mean, the one who just texted me, I guess you're listening live. Why would I need to show you that Jesus is the Lamb? I don't know of any, I don't know of any, any, any Jehovah Witness who's going to deny it. But here you go. Revelation chapter 5, verses 5 to 12. I was asked the question. Jamal, firstborn does not mean created thing. I'm going to explain that to you. I did a series on this. I have articles on this, Jamal. And if you search my YouTube channel, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe, search firstborn. I did a series on firstborn from their own Bible too. Okay, but, but still, Jamal, you say you know that, but you're still getting baffled here. No, you don't know that. Okay, because if you know that, then you're going to follow with me. Jamal, be patient. Breathe, brother. You're going to get a lot from these sessions if you listen carefully and follow slowly and understand. Not assume you know what I'm going to say because you don't know what I'm about to say. Because you so I know that, Sam. What do you know? That Jesus is literally the firstborn son? Do you believe that? Hold on, Protestant. You're too excited. Hold on with the verses. Okay. Because he just said he knows, which he doesn't know, because this is, again, why you guys are going to shortchange yourself. It is, Zenera. Are you praying for miraculous deliverance in Jesus' name? February 10 and 19? I sense you sense something miraculous is going to take place. Yeah. Jamal Williams, how do you know it doesn't mean first created? You're telling me you know it doesn't mean first created. How do you know that? Hold on, guys. Be, be patient with me because I'm trying to help this brother. How do you know it doesn't mean that? Uh, my time is running out, Jamal. All right. Yeah. That's a different context. How do you know it applies to this context? You're quoting to me Psalm 89, 27. Different context. Okay, but let's come back to this, Jamal. Jamal, are you the firstborn? Okay. Are you the oldest child in your family? Yeah. Jamal, you're still not getting it. You're not listening to me. We know from Psalm 89, it doesn't mean literally he's the firstborn. That doesn't tell us what it means in Colossians 115. So you're still not, you're not following me. You're pretending to follow me by not answering my question and bringing up David. Yes, in that context, I know he cannot be literally the firstborn. It has a metaphorical sense. That's that context. That has nothing to do with Colossians 1. So it's not helping your case. Uh, cartoon, I could care less. That sounds like a personal problem. Get lost. If you don't like God, take a hike. No one gives a damn. There goes the chiefs again, the chiefs pontificating. Allahu Akbar. Okay. Jamal, who's the oldest in your family? Who's the oldest in your family? How old is the oldest? Okay. How old is the oldest in your family? My time is running out. I don't want to shut it down on you right now. Okay, 45. Okay, she's the oldest, Jamal? She's the oldest? Okay, so she's the firstborn. Listen to my question carefully. Listen to my question carefully. 
How old is your father as a father? As a father, how old is he? As a father, how old is he? Cartoon, get lost, buddy. Get out of here. How old is he as a father? As a father. Jamal. Quickly, Jamal, because we don't have too much time. Okay. Is your mother alive? This guy's going to make it more complicated than it needs to be. How old is your mother? Okay. How old is she as a mother? How old is she as a mother? Okay. Sorry, guys. Takes too long. No, Jamal, you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention. It's impossible for her to be 61 as a mother. See, this is why I said you're not paying attention. That's why you're not going to get these points if you're not paying attention. How old is she as a mother? So you're not paying attention at all. Thank you, Jamal. She's only as old as the firstborn because without a child, you cannot be a parent. So your firstborn made her a parent. So if your firstborn is 45, that means your mother is only 45 years old because a parent cannot be older than the firstborn. That's why Jesus is called the firstborn, not because he's the first one created, because he is the son that makes God a father. But if God has been a father in eternity before creation, that means Jesus had to have been there in eternity before creation for God to be an actual father. So God the Father is just as old as his firstborn son. His firstborn son is just as old as God the Father. Did you finally get it? Did you finally get it? Did it sink in? That's why the firstborn is special. The firstborn is what makes you a parent. No parent is older than the firstborn child because without a firstborn, you're not a parent. So your mom is 45 years old as a mom because the firstborn is 45. So God the father is just as old as his firstborn son. So if God has been father in eternity, there has to be someone in eternity that he was a father to. Otherwise, he wasn't actually a father. So God the father is just as old as his firstborn. His firstborn is just as old as God the father. So if God the father is eternal, the firstborn is eternal. So yes, Jesus is literally the firstborn because he is the son that made God a father. But since God has always been a father, Jesus has always been the firstborn. Did, it, did you get it now? Did it make sense now? Thank you. Nada's only 12 years old as a mother. As a dad, I'm only 10 years old. As a dad, I'm only 10. My firstborn's 10. She's going to be 10. Jamal, if I have to explain that to you, we got issues, brother. This is probably not for you, this session. I really have to show you that God is the Father and the Father is God. This is the level of biblical literacy that I was talking about. That a Christian has to ask me, where does it say God was always the Father? What do I do? I'm not cut. I'm not cut off for this. I really am not. I can't do this. I don't have your patience. Now, for uh, the gentleman who texted me, the Lamb, he wanted to know how do I know the Lamb is Jesus? Okay, Revelation five verses five to twelve. Let's finish it. Okay, Revelation five verses five to twelve. But one of the elders said to me, stop weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, 
the root of David. Notice the one who texts me on my phone. The lion of the tribe of Judah. He is of the tribe of Judah. The root of David has conquered so as to open the scroll and its seven seals. And I saw standing in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders, a lamb that seemed to have been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes. And the eyes <clears throat> mean the seven spirits of God that have been sent out into the whole earth. Okay. And once he came forward and took it out of the right hand of the one seated on the throne. Okay. When he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. And each one had a harp and golden bowls that were full of incense. The incense means the prayers of the holy ones. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals for you were slaughtered with your blood. Do I need to go on? Do you need more proof the lamb is Jesus? Do I need to really prove that the lamb is Jesus? Which Jehovah's Witness is going to deny the lamb is Jesus? If it's not Jesus, who is it? Is it clear it's Jesus now? See, it's these kind of questions, guys. Sorry, I don't want to frustrate you. That really hurt me. Someone asked me, uh, where does it say God is always the Father? And then when someone asked me, uh, yeah, where does it say the Lamb is Jesus? But we're so busy with end time prophecy. We're so busy that the Mahdi is the Antichrist or James Khan, right, and his blood moons. That something like this, really, I need to really show you the Lamb is Jesus? Are you serious? <sighs> right? I mean, you see the frustration. You guys can understand why I get frustrated? What have you guys been doing all this time in church? What have the pastors been doing? Why should I give it to you, Lizia? Why can't you figure it out on yourself? If it says the one on the throne and the lamb, who's the lamb then? Here, process of elimination. Who's the lamb? Michael? Gabriel? Moses? Come on. Okay. God willing, you guys want me to do more series on more series on using the Joe Witness Bible to prove the Trinity? You guys want me to do that? Lord willing? So you guys want me to do one tomorrow? All right. Well, then pray, guys. I'm still not completely healthy. This flu took a lot out of me. Pray. I've been very down, very lonely, almost like panic attacks. Pray for God's miraculous favor and mercy to deliver me. Pray the blood of Jesus would cleanse me and make me pure and holy and save me from my flesh. Pray I'm filled with the Spirit. Pray God will save me from my enemies and their slander. Pray for my daughters that the Lord Jesus will bless them and love protect them and provide for them and through me and then i'll see them pray for a miracle and two big dates folks two big dates february 10 and february 19 february 10 and february 19 i really and i'm not joking this time need miraculous deliverance from god for miraculous protection and safety so i stay put where i'm at and wait for the lord to bring my girls because i'm dealing with a demon in human flesh a wicked corrupt filthy demon who abuses her power who should be in jail. Pray against her and pray for favor in Jesus' name. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is Jehovah to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Pray that my children's mother will be convicted and repent. No repentance, but justification for her immorality. Pray she'll be chastened to fear the Lord and bow before the Lord and repent finally. And by the grace of God, pray for the provision. You can contribute on Patreon or PayPal. Pray uh, by the grace of God for gracious provision for these upcoming months as I move in my new place and will be alone for a couple of months. See you tomorrow, God willing. Christ is risen, risen indeed.